Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at inverse functions so we can answer questions from exercise 2D. So first of all how do we write an inverse function? Well if you've got a standard function f of x then the inverse function is going to be f with a minus 1 as a power on it of x. If you remember back to trigonometry you've got the standard sine function but you've also got sine to the power of minus 1. And sine to the power of minus 1 effectively represents the inverse of your sine operation. It works in exactly the same way. This power of minus 1 here does not mean 1 over your function, like an indice. It's just a symbol that we use to represent the inverse function of whatever function we've got. You could have cos and cos to the power of minus 1. You could have tan, tan to the minus 1. And you can think of other lo lots of other different inverse functions like adding on 3 and subtracting 3, multiplying by 3 and dividing by 3. Um, another classic one is squaring and square rooting and another one is e to the power of something and ln of something. Now if you were to do an inverse operation followed by that operation again or vice versa, effectively you're squaring and then square rooting so you're back to where you started or you're signing and then sign inversing. So you're back to where you started. <clears throat> okay, and the graphs of um, these inverse functions are quite interesting as well. If you were to just have the graph of your function, a way of sketching the inverse function would be to reflect it in the line y equals x. So if you plot the function and its inverse, they are a reflection in the line y equals x. This means that the domain and range of the original function become the range and the domain of the inverse, so they swap round. So inverse functions and functions have a relation in the graphs where they reflect in the y equals x line, and they also have a relation in the domain and range by swapping over. <coughs> so inverse functions only exist for one-to-one -one functions. Remember that um, an inverse, so a function has a definition of um, only being able to send each x-coordinate to one y-coordinate. Well, effectively, if you have a, if you take a many-to-one function, many-to-one mappings are allowed to be functions, when you find the inverse of this many-to-one function, you all of a sudden get a one-to-many mapping. Effectively, your mapping swaps around. And in this case here, so one to many, started writing many and I wrote mapping, uh, one to many mapping uh, is no longer a function. So when you find the inverse of a many to one function, you get a one to many function, just like this one here. x squared is a many to one function, two x coordinates go to one y coordinate, <coughs> and if you take y equals the positive and negative square root of x, then you're going to get a one to many function, which is not allowed. You cannot have one to many functions. So for you to be able to find an inverse function, it has to be a one to one function. Many to one function inverses are not classed as functions. So find the inverse. Let's go through and look at how we will actually now compute an inverse function. So we have a function here, 3 over x minus 1, and this bit on the side here, that just means that x is any member of the real set of numbers, but does not equal 1. Well, why can't it equal 1? Because if it were to equal 1, you'd get 0 on your denominator. So sometimes you'll see this on the side of a function, x cannot equal certain values, and that's probably because the fraction will make it, um, that that value will make the fraction on the denominator 0. Um, so, the way that we find an inverse function, you may remember this from GCSE, is to write out y equals your function and then rearrange this to make x the subject. Effectively, what we want is, what we've already got, is how to get from x coordinates to y coordinates, but what we'd really like to know is how to get from y coordinates back to x coordinates. So this can be done just by rearranging. So times up by x minus 1, expand your brackets. We're making x the subject here, that's the target. 
So now we've got x equals 3 plus y over y. So this 3 plus y over y function is the function that I substitute my output numbers into to get myself back to whatever input number I started with. So this here is the inverse function. Now generally we write our final answer with x's rather than y's, so it's going to be f inverse x, 3 plus x over x. So the last thing you'd have to do is just replace your y's for some x's, because typically we use um, x's in functions. Okay, next question then. The function f of x equals the square root of x minus 2. x is any real number, but x has to be bigger than or equal to 2. Well, why is that the case? Well, otherwise, if x was 1, for example, we'd have a negative inside our square root value, which we cannot do in real numbers. So state the range of f of x. So bringing in a, a question from the last topic. Find the function f inverse and state its domain and range and sketch the graphs and the line y equals x. Okay, so substituting in x equals 2, the smallest allowed value will give you an answer of 0, um, and as, we are as this is an increasing function, it will always go above 0. There is no limit to how high these values we can substitute in, so the range will increase indefinitely. We're thinking about what we need to know for the range. Therefore, the range is anything greater than and including 0. So the range for this question here is f of x is bigger than or equal to 0. OK, so going back through this, we can substitute any number in um, that we want, and we square root it, we'll get another number. We can keep on going up and up and up to infinity. So the square root of infinity is still infinity. And thinking about what the minimum point is going to be, we'll substitute in 2 the lowest possible value, and we get 0. So that's how we know it's bigger than or equal to 0. So make sure you write your answer like this, f of x is greater than or equal to 0. Part b now, find the function f inverse and state its domain and range. So remember what we do there is we set up an equation, y equals our function, rearrange, and we get y squared plus 2 equals x. Now this function here is the inverse function, it's how we get from our y coordinates or our y output numbers to our x input numbers. And we just write our final answer as f inverse equals x squared plus 2. So that's the inverse function. That's the opposite function to square root of x minus 2. Now let's think about the domains and ranges here. The original function f of x had a domain of x is greater than or equal to 2, and its range was f of x is greater than or equal to 0. Now let's think about the inverse function. The inverse function here, for no matter what value of x, has to be bigger than or equal to 2 on the range, because x squared is always going to be positive, so we can't get anything lower than 2, so it's always going to be 2 or bigger. And the domain here, well, you can substitute anything really into the x squared function, but in this case here, we want it to be a one-to-one -one function, so we have to make sure that x is greater than or equal to zero. So these two will swap around. So these two swap around, and these two swap around. And that's always going to happen for your original function and your inverse function, that the domains and ranges swap around for your two functions. OK, let's have a look at drawing the graphs now. So remember, for the original function, we're only drawing from the x-coordinate of 2 upwards. And that's going to look like this. And remember, for the inverse function, we're only drawing from x and upwards as well. So when we substitute in x equals 0, we get 2. So that's going to look a little bit like this. And drawing in the line y equals x, we can clearly see that there is a reflection in the line y equals x. OK, new function then, x squared minus 3, x is existing in the reals, x is greater than or equal to 0, find f inverse x. State, uh, sketch the graph and state its domain, solve the equation for when the function is in, equal to the inverse function. So remember, the first thing we need to do for finding the inverse function is to set y equal to your function and then rearrange. <clears throat> so this function here is how we 
plug in our output numbers and get back to our input numbers because remember that's what inverse functions do they take output values and they allow you to work out what the input value is and the final thing you'd have to do is just replace any y's for x's let's have a look at now sketching the graph here so we need to know the domain to be able to sketch the graph um, we can find the domain by finding the range of the original function. The range of this original function here, if x is greater than or equal to 0, sub in 0 to get a minimum point. Sometimes you'll get a maximum point here, but in this case, because it's a positive x squared, we're going to get a minimum point. As x increases, x squared is going to increase, so this graph here is going to go up and up for infinity. So therefore, the range of this function here is f of x is greater than or equal to minus 3. So we know, therefore, let's just go back. So we know then the domain of the inverse is going to be x is greater than or equal to minus 3. So before you start sketching an f inverse graph, you need to know the domain that you're going to be working with. And the way you can work out the domain that you're going to be working with is to find the range of the original function because remember they'll always swap over. Okay, so now we can draw the graph. So our inverse function has to be greater than or equal to minus three. So the graph of this is going to look like this. State its domain and range. Well, we know the domain is x is bigger than or equal to minus three. And we can clearly see here that the, um, that the domain here, state its domain, yeah, x is greater than minus three. Okay, good. Uh, we don't need to do the range for that question. Part C here is to now solve the equation of f of x is equal to the inverse function of x. This looks like it's only going to happen at one point when we draw those graphs. So let's now set... Ah, I see what they've done here. This is quite a sneaky way of doing it. However, since they meet on the line y equals x, so the intersection points of the inverse function and the original function must intersect along the line y equals x. So therefore, we know that the x-coordinate here is going to be equal to the y-coordinate in this position. And this will always happen for inverse functions. And what you could do is set your original function equal to your inverse function and solve. This is probably going to be an easier way of doing it. So what they're going to do here is they're going to set up your original function and x because effectively what they're setting up here is two equations y equals x squared minus 3 and y equals x because we know that the intersection points between an inverse function and an original function must intersect along the line y equals x because they're a reflection of each other okay so subtract x solve maybe plug it into the quadratic formula and we get x is equal to 1 plus root 13 over 2. We can negate the negative solution because we clearly saw it was on the positive side of the graph. So that there is the only solution. All right, then, so your turn here to have a go at finding some inverse functions. There are plenty more questions in exercise 2D um, to have a go on as well. So pause the video. We'll try these two out. And then we can go ahead and answer some great questions from exercise 2D. All right then, so let's have a look at this part A question here then. So we first find the inverse function by setting up y equals 3 over x minus 2 times x minus 2 onto the other side, um, divide by y x minus 2 equals 3 over y, and then add on 2 onto the other side, and we get 3 over y plus 2. Okay. And in this case here, we now need to write out the uh, g inverse with just, instead of y's, we're going to put x's there instead. 3 over x plus 2. Alternatively, another correct answer here, if you were to expand the brackets earlier, would be 3 plus 2x, or 2x plus 3, all over x. Both these here are like the correct answers.
Okay, uh, part B then, g of x, um, so we set up a y equals square root of x minus 3. And we rearrange to make x the subject, so square both sides. Uh, add 3 onto the other side. And we get x equals this function here. So whatever output numbers you've got, you can plug it into this formula here, and that will give you the answer to your input value. But we need to write out our final answer, not with y's, but with x's. So x squared plus 3 is your answer to the inverse function for this question here. All right then, so thank you very much for watching this video. Do have some practice on exercise 2D. These are some quite relatively straightforward questions. I would like you to challenge yourself on some of the more harder questions in that exercise. Okay, thanks very much for watching.